The 16-inch MacBook Pro is one of the most highly anticipated Apple products in years, and based on our testing of this new machine, specifically 12 videos so far covering the 16-inch MacBook Pro, we truly believe that this is the best value MacBook that's ever been made. Let me explain why. Before we get into the performance, cooling improvements, and pricing, I want to first point out the new features that really make it stand out compared to the old 15-inch model. Now you may have noticed that I just called the 15-inch model old, which it's not, since the latest update was released just 6 months ago, but I'll explain why I said that in just a minute. The beauty of the 16-inch MacBook Pro is that it offers an excellent package of updated features and performance at the base price, showing that yes, Apple has finally started listening. We asked for better cooling, we got it. We asked for a larger battery, we got it. Thinner bezels, a better keyboard, a physical escape key, a more powerful charger, and 512 gigabytes of base storage. Apple gave us what we asked for, and at the same base price as before, which a lot of people weren't expecting. They even threw in things we didn't even ask for, like the updated speakers, updated microphones, up to a massive 64 gigabytes of RAM, and an insane 8 terabytes of storage, which is overkill for most people. And they even allow you to get the best graphics option while configuring from the base model, instead of forcing you to start with the higher end $2800 model like they did with the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Apple didn't have to do any of that, but they did, and we the consumers are benefiting from it, because the 16 inch MacBook Pro is an excellent deal. Yes, it's a bit larger and heavier than the 15 inch model, but after a month of use, the 16 inch Pro starts to feel no different in size. You honestly just get used to it. As for the keyboard, we've been using it for almost a month and we've yet to have any reliability issues at all, nor have we heard of anybody else having issues either. And on top of that, it feels better as well. You get more key travel along with a nice springy feedback that makes, in my opinion, the best MacBoard keyboard yet. Yes, even better than the one on the 2015 MacBook Pro, which we did test and compare to this new keyboard. And as a plus, that physical escape key is a lot more convenient to use. The display hasn't really changed apart from the slightly larger size, but Apple has also slimmed down the bezels, especially at the top. And the difference is actually significant. It looks quite a bit more immersive and modern. For the speakers, the 16-inch MacBook Pro packs a set of three speakers on each side, and it's actually the perfect setup because each speaker is fully dedicated to a certain sound frequency range. One speaker for the high notes, one for the mid-tones, and one just for bass. This means that a single speaker doesn't have to produce two different frequency ranges at the same time, so there's no clashing or blending of tones. And for that same reason, vocals are incredibly clear and you can easily hear every single instrument and note within a song, compared to previous models where it can sound muffled or tinny at max volume. The only downside is that the speakers got a little bit quieter than the 15 inch, but the quality is definitely worth the trade-off. The 16-inch MacBook Pro also has upgraded microphones that Apple calls Studio Quality. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's good enough to replace a studio microphone, but it's actually good enough for content creators who are just starting out and don't want to invest in a dedicated microphone just yet. My big issue with it is that we still get the old 720p webcam which looks horrendous in comparison to the better microphone quality. Now let's get into the good stuff, performance, starting with the processor. When Apple first added the 6-core option to the MacBook Pro, the cooling system was so limiting that paying an extra $400 for the i9 processor only got you around 2% more real-world performance under load. But since then, Apple and Intel have been working on optimizations, and along with the new thicker body and improved cooling on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, the base model with the 2.6GHz i7 processor now actually outperforms the best 2.9GHz 6-core i9 processor from the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro, which is very impressive. The only downside with a better cooling system is that it's a little bit louder than before, around 1 to 2 decibels louder, but the fan noise isn't as high pitched as before, so it's not too bad and definitely worth the better cooling. We tested quite a few things with the base model and we found that it's fast enough for most people. For video editing, the 6-core base model was surprisingly 
not that much slower than the 8-core model that also came with the best graphics and 32GB of RAM for a total price of $3,500. In a couple of the tests, the better spec model did much better for mainly one reason, which I'll get into in just a second. But overall, the base model was able to handle video editing extremely well considering the price. We then tested photo editing in Lightroom and Photoshop, and the base model yet again handled them perfectly fine. Exposure and color adjustments were instant, brushes were smooth and responsive, zooming was super quick, and the spot healing brush worked instantly. Now you might be thinking, why not upgrade to the 8-core processor? Yes, the cooling has been improved, so now the 8-core can run at higher clock speeds, but so can the 6-core. Sure, you can get the 8-core if you have the extra money, but I actually think the base 6-core processor is now fast enough for most people. And that's due to one very important recent change in the software world. Graphics performance has recently been improving quicker than processor performance, so certain productivity apps like Final Cut Pro 10 and various Adobe apps like Lightroom, Photoshop, and Premiere Pro have all recently been updated to use more graphics power than ever before, therefore leaving less work for the processor to have to deal with. And what's great about the 16-inch MacBook Pro is that it packs AMD's brand new Navi 7 nanometer graphics chips, which are a massive improvement over the previous graphics in the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Even the base graphics in the 16-inch is almost as powerful as the top-spec Vega 20 graphics option in the 15. And in a lot of our tests, the base 5300M graphics on the 16-inch performed quite close to the best 5500M 8GB graphics option, being only a bit slower for common 4K video editing, as well as 4.5K red raw editing. And for gaming, the base model performed basically the same as the higher-end model, getting the same 70fps average in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which is very impressive. Now there were two specific tests where the better graphics model performed much better. In the Blender benchmark, it finished almost twice as fast as the base model. And in our 5 minute 8K raw export test, it finished almost 4 times as fast. And it did it for mainly one reason. It's packing 8GB of video memory. And those specific tests were completely maxing it out. So the 4GB of VRAM on the base model was a major limitation in those tests. And for those of you doing other things like programming and music production, the base 6-core processor should be more than good enough for most of you out there. And for those of you doing work that is high-end enough to require the 8-core processor, you're probably making enough money from that work to not even question upgrading the processor or the RAM. But for everyone else, the base 16-inch MacBook Pro is the first base model that can handle a wide variety of productivity programs without having to worry about which upgrades to buy. And what's even more impressive is that the base model now gets double the storage at the same price, an acceptable 512 gigabytes, which also runs at incredibly fast transfer speeds, basically as fast as the 2019 Mac Pro's SSDs. We honestly believe that the base 16-inch MacBook Pro is the go-to model for most people because the value you get for the cash is the best we've ever seen on any MacBook ever. You'll get awesome performance along with great features like the new reliable keyboard, modernized 16-inch display, and best-in-class speakers. Now as far as features we wish Apple would have included, an SD card slot would have been really nice since it's the most common storage card used by a lot of people, but Apple chose to stick with 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports once again. We also wish it featured Face ID authentication, but due to the very thin display, it doesn't seem like we're getting that anytime soon. Now for those of you who already have a 2018 or 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro, you honestly won't see much of a difference in performance, especially if you already have Vega 20 graphics. But for everyone else, the 16-inch MacBook Pro will definitely be a big upgrade. Now with the holiday season around the corner, a lot of the 15-inch MacBook Pros are now on sale, like this high-end 2019 model that's already a whole $500 off. But while it might be tempting, there's one huge problem with it. The latest 15-inch model already seems old, even after only one month since the release of the 16-inch Pro, that's permanently replacing it. Imagine two or three years down the road when you're trying to sell your discontinued 15-inch MacBook Pro, while every new model for the last couple of years has been a 16-inch. You're honestly not going to get as much for it, especially since it uses the butterfly keyboard, which a lot of people believe is faulty. That's why the 2019 15-inch Pro is a massive $500 off on Amazon after only six months, 
they need to sell out of their existing inventory quickly before people realize that it actually makes more sense to just buy the base 16 inch model instead. So to be completely honest, we fully recommend the 16 inch MacBook Pro instead of saving some extra cash by going with the 15 inch. And if you're wanting to spend some extra cash on upgrades, but you're not sure which ones, check out our buyer's guide right over there, as well as our entire 16 inch MacBook Pro playlist right there. And if you enjoyed this review, tap like and click the circle above to subscribe for our in-depth testing of the 2019 Mac Pro coming soon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.